Hello everyone, my name is Jamin. Thanks so much for visiting my channel. In this video, I have a Dell Inspiron 3668 desktop system. I'm going to take you on a teardown or disassembly tour, show you how to get inside and many of the various components you can access once you're in. So first thing, power down your computer the correct way. Make sure it's off and unplugged from your power cord. So we're going to flip our computer over to access our back. We're going to take off this screw and this screw to remove this panel. After those screws are gone, we'll grab this handle here, pull directly back, and that panel comes off. Now we'll spin the computer around to access the front. Here you see three clips, so we're going to raise the computer up just a little bit. We're going to undo these three clips, and that comes right off. To open this up more so we can access the inside of the computer, you'll see this blue tab here that says pull. So you don't have to unscrew anything. There's no levers or switches. You just grab it and pull it open. As a general computer repair side note, guys, whenever I'm working on a computer in my shop, it's sitting on an anti-static mat. Either that or an anti-static bracelet are great ideas to avoid damaging anything in your computer when you're working on it. If you would like any help with tools or supplies for your project, as well as any replacement or upgrade parts for this specific model computer, there will be a link above, also below in the description, and it will be a list of all those tools and supplies and replacement parts for this computer. Your RAM, you have a single RAM stick right there, most of you will have one RAM stick stock in this computer. There is another RAM slot right next to it. The way that the RAM works, there are two white buttons on each side of the RAM. You're going to press that button down away from the RAM. That will release it, and then you can just pull the RAM out. Just like that. As you'll notice, there's a long side to the RAM and a short side, so you can only put that RAM in the correct way. You can't put it in upside down, so don't worry about that. This computer takes DDR4 RAM at 2400 megahertz because this is an i-series processor. This computer has an i5, an Intel Core i5 processor, so that would mean it takes 2400 megahertz RAM. If you have an Intel Celeron processor and not in the i-series, you're going to look for 2133 megahertz RAM. I will have all this information below in the description um, if you need it to search for your own RAM. Uh, I will also have several RAM options below in that link I told you about with all the replacement and upgrade parts. Uh, so I will have some 2133 megahertz RAM if you have the Intel Celeron processor. And I will have this 2400 megahertz RAM if you have any of the i-series, the i3, i5, or i7s. To get the RAM back in, you just make sure that those white buttons are open. You put the RAM into the slot and just press. And those arms will grab onto it and hold it in place. Keep in mind with a RAM upgrade, if you're here because you're trying to increase your computer's performance, its speed, uh, upgrading RAM, maxing out your RAM is a great way to do that. Probably one of the easiest and cheapest ways to increase your speed or your performance. If you want another idea to increase those, upgrading your storage is also a good idea. For most of you, this will be your only storage device in the computer. It is a 3.5 inch, one terabyte SATA hard drive. This can be upgraded to a two terabyte hard drive. Um, and of course, if you have a smaller one, if you have, let's say a 500 gigabyte, then you can upgrade it to either a one terabyte or a two terabyte. The way to access this is we're gonna close this up right here and we're gonna take out that screw right there. I'm then gonna go ahead and unplug it. That blue cable and this one right there. And once it's unplugged, you're gonna pull on these two tabs and it comes out. Now again, this is a one terabyte solid state drive, 3.5 inch. It's inside this caddy. So if you are looking to replace your drive, you would take out these two screws on that side, these two screws on that side. The hard drive would then slide out of this metal caddy and you can put your other one inside. 
I will have uh, three different sizes below in the description in that link I told you about with all the replacement and upgrade parts for this model computer. I will have a 500 gigabyte hard drive in this size and I will have a one terabyte and a two terabyte if you're looking to upgrade. In addition to that 3.5 inch drive right here, you do have these two SATA 2 and SATA 3 ports right there. So with the right cables, you can use those two ports and you can run them down here into this area and you can have additional hard drives and solid state drives here. So if you want to, you can put another one terabyte hard drive in here using one of these SATA cables uh, or you can take a 256, I think that's what this computer maxes out at, a 256 gigabyte solid state drive and you can put it here. Uh, a lot of people like doing that, putting a smaller solid state drive with the operating system so that it runs very quickly and they'll use the larger uh, one terabyte hard drive for just storage. Now when I did that in this computer, I had a hard time getting the cable into this one um, just because there wasn't a whole lot of room. I had to run it on the SATA 3 just if you're going to do that, be aware. Uh, so I will also have below in the description, I will have the cables you need for here and I will also have some options for down here for the uh, 2.5 inch hard drives and the 2.5 inch solid state drives. I'll have some different size options for that as well. I guess the last thing to mention about this kind of an operation, if you do install a new drive to your computer, you most likely will need to install an operating system onto it for your computer to function. If you would like help with that, I will have two video links below in the description. One will show you how to install Windows 10, the other will show you how to install Windows 11. Also keep in mind if you have data on your old drive that may be bad or unusable, there's still a good chance you can recover data from bad drives. I will have more information about that below in the description as well. This right here is your CMOS battery. It's held into this CMOS battery port right there. Be very careful taking that out. Uh, these are very flimsy plastic. Sometimes you can break them. If you do break them, uh, you won't be able to secure your CMOS battery in there again and then your motherboard's kind of junk unless you can get that fixed. If you want to replace this, if it's gone bad, I will have a replacement option for you below in the description in that link I told you about with all of the replacement parts for this model computer. Uh, if you're looking to reset BIOS, you only have to remove it for maybe 15-20 seconds and that should be sufficient to reset BIOS. A couple quick things to keep in mind with this operation. First of all, in most situations, this will only reset your BIOS system settings, not your BIOS password. If you would like more BIOS password reset information, check out below in the FAQs. Also, this BIOS reset procedure can be a common troubleshooting step if your computer's not turning on. If that's why you're here and you would like more help troubleshooting what's wrong with your computer, there'll be a video link below in the description. It'll be the full troubleshooting video on how to deal with a computer that's not turning on and how to fix it. Your Wi-Fi card is right here. It's held down by a single screw there that will release the Wi-Fi card and this plastic guard. Under the plastic guard, you have two antenna wire. Those are just snaps. Those snap directly up and off of the Wi-Fi card. They do need to be at a perfect 90 degree angle to snap back on though. And you are strong enough to damage them if they're not at the right angle and you try to force it. So just go slow, be patient. It can be a pain in the butt if you're not used to it, uh, but you will be able to get those back on. Just, just be patient. After you pull it out of the port there, then you can replace it. I will have a Wi-Fi card replacement option below in the description in that link I told you about with all the replacement parts and upgrade parts for this model computer. I guess the last thing to mention about this kind of an operation, if you are having Wi-Fi issues in your computer, if you cannot access your Wi-Fi options, if you can't see any networks, it's possible your Wi-Fi card is bad and you may need to replace it, but it's also possible it's something else. I will have a video link below in the description showing you how to fix a no Wi-Fi situation where you cannot access your Wi-Fi options. Hopefully you can fix it that way and you don't need a Wi-Fi card replacement. This is your fan, your heat sink is under it, and the CPU is under that. So to get the fan out, we're gonna unplug the black, red, blue, and yellow wires here from the motherboard, and we're not gonna pull on the wires, we're gonna pull on the plug, on the, on, on the white plug and wiggle that out. So that just unplugged your fan. Then we're gonna take the screw out from each of the four corners. Now, 
and then your fan can come off. And then you can clean it, you can blow it out, do whatever you want to do, replace it. Now we're left with your heat sink right here, also held down by four screws. And then we can get your heat sink off. Your CPU is right here. It's held down by this screw here, that's a hex screw, so you'll need a hex driver to get that out. And then once you unscrew that just a little bit, you don't have to take the screw all the way out, but then you're gonna press down on this arm, slide it out from under the guard, pull it back, and then lift this up. And that's how you can get to your CPU. One thing I did wanna mention is when I shot this video, I was in the middle of replacing the CPU and I had already cleaned it off. So when you take off your heatsink, you're not gonna see a nice clean CPU like I just showed you here. You're gonna see a CPU, but it's gonna be covered in thermal paste. Also, the underside of your heatsink will be covered in thermal paste. That's to keep the CPU cool when it's being used. If you break that seal, if you expose that thermal paste to air from taking the heatsink off, you do need to reapply it after that. Once that seal's been broken, it's not gonna work as well. So to reapply it, you wanna clean all the old paste off first of the CPU and the heatsink. To do that, you'll need an alcohol mixture to do that. I'll have a suggestion below in the description in that list I told you about with all the tools and replacement parts for this computer. After cleaning off all the old thermal paste from both the CPU and the heatsink, you'll reapply thermal paste to the CPU. Don't apply too much thermal paste. If you do, you can actually lock heat in rather than facilitate its transport out. I'll show you how to apply the correct amount of thermal paste later in the video. To get the CPU out, I will generally use a small flat plastic pry tool and be very gently go under the side and lift it up like that. Now this computer here had an i5 7th gen processor. Some of you may have an Intel Celeron, some of you may have an i3, and some of you may even have an i7. Uh, so any of those will work in here. I, I will have compatibility information below in the description. Uh, if you wanna upgrade your, your CPU, I will have more information on that in another video on how to upgrade this computer. To get your CPU back in, there's a little trick. Um, even though it's a square and you may not know how to put it down, if you see here, there's a gold triangle or a gold arrow in this corner. And if you look at this port right here, you'll see a little white triangle or a little white arrow in that corner. So they match up. So that's how you would set that in there like that. And now I'm gonna get some thermal paste to put on that to control the heat. I'll put the thermal paste right in the center. I'll put that a nice full little squirt, not too much though. I'm then gonna go ahead and shut this down on top of it. Make sure that it goes underneath that screw lock it in place, and then tighten that screw down. Also, while I had my heat sink out, I blew it out, I took an old uh, toothbrush, and I really went in there, I cleaned off all the dust and all the buildup, uh, really took this chance to get that nice and clean so it can do its job very well. I'm gonna take it, and I'm gonna put this on top of the CPU and screw it down in place. So now I'll take my fan, I'll bring it back here. I'll plug it into the motherboard where we unplugged it from earlier. And I'll screw the fan down in place. As a word of caution, make sure you put that fan down the correct way. Make sure that when it spins, it blows air up. If, if you put it in backwards, it'll blow air down. That won't do what you want it to do. But that's the end of this instructional video. I hope it was helpful. Please like and share if it was, if you think it can help someone else. Feel free to subscribe if you enjoy DIY computer content, or if you want to keep me on hand to answer any future questions, I do answer all questions at least a couple times a day. Remember though, if you do have a question, check out the FAQs in the description first. It could save you some time waiting for an answer. Thank you so much everyone. I look forward to seeing you on my next video.